Okay, welcome to today's video. Just like last time, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna rank basically the best back exercises and the worst back exercises. Some of you may be doing these exercises, in which case keep doing them because they're the most optimal and effective. But some of you might, again, have been watching some TikToker showing you some random BS exercise that does nothing for your back, uh, in which case you'll know by the end of this video what that is and what to avoid when next time you're going to the gym. And you'll also get my you know, my S tier exercises. Okay. The number one exercises out there. Some of you may not have the equipment, but you know, guaranteed at least one of you guys, or sorry, you'll have at least one of my S tier exercises, if not, you know, two or three. So yeah, without further ado, let me get on with it. So like last video, right? To judge an exercise, you have to judge it using a criteria for last time. I think it was chest um, again, what mattered was tension and stretch, feeling that like really deep, painful stretch in your chest. Um, that's probably the number one most important thing with your chest and also with your back, right? If throughout the movement, you like feel like your metabolites in your lats, essentially, if you feel your lats being like pulled each and every which way apart and you get like a massive stretch at the top, that's the number one factor um, in determining what a good back exercise is. It is, you know, according to the literature, stretch mediated hypertrophy is more and more showing up to be like the number one driver of um, back growth. And I can attest to that, you know, every time I uh, choose an exercise, I make sure to like hang, like, like let the weight stretch my lat out or my upper back out for like two seconds. and just like stay in that position every time. Cause I know that's like really hypertrophic and also, you know, to do lengthen partials once I fail. So like, you know, say I'm doing a lat pull down and I failed and I'm at the top, I'll, you know, keep going and do um, do partials in the lengthened position because that also has been shown to be very hypertrophic. So one that you can get a good, deep, big stretch, painful stretch, um, a lot of tension on the lats or the upper back. Also one that feels good. You actually feel your back working and moving the weight, not just, you know, whatever, um, uh, any other muscle group. You want to feel your back. Um, it's, oh, it's really important that you have a mind, good mind-muscle connection um, when training your back because you know obviously your back is behind you you can't see it so it's the hardest muscle group to develop a mind muscle connection with um but it is also incredibly important to have that mind muscle connection if you want to train the back effectively recruit the muscle fibers um because you know sometimes people like i used to do like lat pullovers and i feel it in my abs and my triceps and never in my lats so that just shows you how important mind muscle connection is for growing your back and lastly it has to be easily you know have to, you have to get stronger on it easily it can be a weird uh um, strength curve so that like, you know, like with standing chest flies, for example, you can't get stronger past a certain weight without like having to like look like a, you know, swing around and like get the weight up and you know what I mean, right? So you have to find um, basically an exercise which you're locked in position and you can just focus on you're getting your back stronger and not having to stabilize and all that stuff. Um, but that will come into, I'll explain, you know, the certain exercises which cover these criteria and thus make it a good exercise. So let me get on with it first. Let me get, hold on, let me make myself a bit smaller. Let me make my, um, let me just get off the bat, start off um, with the worst exercises, right? Starting off with a kneeling lat pull down. Now there's a lot of like weird, goofy exercises out there that people do, but I feel like this exercise is like a really, really shit one that people do anyways, thinking that it's good. So other people, like not many people do the other like stupid exercises, but a lot of people do this exercise and it's actually really bad. Um, the reason being you're kneeling down, trying to control a weight with nothing holding you in position, meaning that if you want to go heavier, you won't be able to, cause you'll just end up moving your body and you're, you're not isolating your lats because of the stability demand. So as you go heavier, it's basically, um, a ridiculously bad exercise to be doing. What you want to do instead is do a bench, you know, a single arm lat pull down using a bench for support, right? That way you're stable, you're in position, and you just focus on pulling with your lats and not having to like, you know, pull with your whole body, like when you're kneeling down, right? And if you were to do a um, single arm lat pull down with a bench, that would make it an A exercise, especially for the lower lats. A lot of people, especially me, have under underdeveloped lower lats. You see a big chunk up here, but nothing down here. And it's, it's a really aesthetic um, muscle group. Oh, sorry. It's really aesthetic when you have that lower lat development. Um, so, you know, if you are doing, if you want to do single arm lat pull downs, don't do them kneeling down. Okay. Use a bench at the cable stack and do them like that. Um, if it's not an effective, if it's not an efficient exercise, what I mean by this is 
if it's not, if it doesn't take all the boxes of the criteria, then you're just wasting pointless amounts of energy doing a suboptimal exercise, which isn't going to yield any results. So you might as well allocate that energy to an exercise, which one targets the muscle better two helps you get a stretch three, you know, de develops a good mind muscle connection rather than doing, um, you know, an exercise, which feels really hard, like maybe like a deadlift or a barbell row, for example. But in reality, there's much better exercises, which stimulate much less central nervous um, system and um, systematic and axial fatigue. And, you know, the stimulus to fatigue ratio is better, which means you recover better from the exercises which you're stable in and it damages the muscle and, you know, generates more hypertrophy than the, you know, less stable ones like the deadlift and the barbell row. So kneeling lat pull down is getting an F because I know there's maybe some of you who do that one. Rack pull. Now this is another one which, you know, you see a lot of bodybuilders and big people doing them and they are, can be good for growth, I guess. Um, but definitely not my first choice at all. And most of the time it's people do this so that they can like feel big in the gym and like feel cool. Cause it's basically an, essentially an ego lift. You're picking up a weight. You're not even deadlifting it. You're just picking it up from like knee height and you're like, you're coming up with it. And supposedly it does something for your lats, which, you know, it can, but for most people, the mind muscle connection you get from it is, you know, dog shit and it won't really do anything. It's like the deadlifts, right? If you're trying to grow your back, rack pulls, deadlifts won't grow your back. Okay. Based off my experience, but also based off um, the literature, you want to be doing your I more isolated movements. Whereas if you're doing your rack pull, it's your traps, it's your forearms, it's your low spinal erectors, it's your hamstrings. Um, and maybe, yeah, a bit of lats, but you know, you're going to get a bit of better, better bang for your buck by doing more isolated movements. Um, another one which makes this another reason why this is like a bad exercise is because it doesn't fulfill the fundamental principles of um, what makes an exercise good, right? If you're not lengthening and stretching your muscles out, if you're not squeezing the contraction, then chances are it's not a good bodybuilding exercise. It's more of just a, I don't know, moving a lot of weight exercise, right? So if you're not stretching, you're not squeezing, that's, does, that's going to render it an ineffective e an exercise, in my opinion, but also we know that you need to stretch, squeeze, um, control the eccentric for an, an exercise to be effective for muscle growth. So instead, as I said, focus on more isolation movements, which I'll come on to later in this video. So rack pulls getting an E, deadlifts getting a D, right? I know some of you might be like, what? Deadlifts are goated. Yeah, they're good. They're fun. You can get stronger. You can build muscle. But again, fo it focuses on your hamstrings, your forearms, your traps, um, what else? Your spinal erectors. And it takes a huge toll on your central nervous system because you're, you're lifting with so many muscle groups. It doesn't really focus on one particular muscle group well. So you're not going to grow that muscle group well. You're going to grow all of those muscle groups a little bit, if that makes sense. So you want to pick, again, a lat focus or upper back focus exercise where you're stable and you can just focus on squeezing and stretching your lats and your upper back, right? Another thing is a lot of people, when they do deadlifts, they don't even control the eccentric. And even if they were to, what are you, what muscle group is actually, um, uh, controlling that eccentric, right? It's essentially your whole body. If you're, if you lift it up and you're coming down with controlling the eccentric, it's like five muscle groups controlling that eccentric. Again, you're taking the load off one muscle group, putting it on many so that it's, yes, it's effective at targeting many muscle groups, but, but you want to be targeting isolated single muscle groups. Does that make sense? So if you're trying to do deadlifts because you think it's going to grow your back, trust me, I did deadlifts for like my first year, you know, beginner ego lifting, and it doesn't do anything for your back, anything. Um, yeah, it's good for your traps. It's good for, um, you know, your spinal erectors. But other than that, stay away from it if you're trying to grow your back. It's, and it's, you know, very systematic, systematically fatiguing um, and obviously axial fatiguing. Um, so the stimulus to fatigue ratio is worse. You're going to take longer to recover. And it doesn't even target your lats better in the first place. So it's just, you know, pointless exercise to do if you're trying to grow your lats, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, deadlift's getting a D, I'm afraid. Again, I'm, there's so many exercises out there. I'm just going to focus on the main ones, which I see people doing and um, what I did in the past and what I do now. Okay, next, this might come as a surprise to some of you, but I'm just very harsh in my, you know, exercise selection, okay? If I only choose the most optimal, I don't, Sorry. I don't care how it looks. I, I don't care if people on TikTok are doing it. I don't care if, you know, I look strong when I'm doing it. You know, I just care about isolating the muscle group and growing muscle. I just care about bodybuilding, right? Um, don't really care about power, power lifting. 
So that's why seated cable row, bodybuilding, uh, sorry, bodybuilding, barbell row and dumbbell row are getting C, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. These are great exercise ex exercises. They're way better than dead deadlifts, rack pulls, knee and lap pull downs. Um, they're fantastic. And in fact, I still do them from time to time, even though I know that there's better exercises out there. But the reason I give them a C is because, again, you don't have a chest support. You don't have anything supporting um you don't have anything allowing you to just control the weight and squeeze the weight and lengthen your muscles um without having to like you know control your abs and shake and and you know strain your lower back and um you know you're just not stable enough and the less stable you are essentially the less able you are to focus on move it taking your lats or your upper back through a full range of motion really just you know focusing on it your lat squeezing and you know all that stuff you're gonna have to focus on your your lower back coming up and down or forwards and backwards um you know it takes in it, it involves a lot of um systematic energy and um just isn't that isn't as isolationist as we'd like right so you know that's why and also like if you're doing a seated cable row and you're using like a neutral grip or now grip it's not really a full range of motion essentially for your lats right um, cause you stop out here, right. Um, and then you pull in here, but you pull into your belly, um, not allowing you to like fully contract your lats backwards. Um, I am being picky, but if you're going to do like I say, the cable row, for example, maybe use a wider grip so that you can, you know, fully retract your scapula and, you know, get a better stretch. Okay. I'm muting this. Um, and you know, bar, bar, um, barrel rows, dumbbell rows, you know, are great exercises for developing overall thickness. But again, you know, you are loading your lower back as well and your hamstrings and, you know, it's more systematically fatiguing. You're not isolating your upper back uh, more than your lats or your lats more than your upper back. It's sort of just both at once while bent over, while trying to like tense your abs and your lower back, you know, starts hurting and all that stuff, right? Although they are very good at targeting your, your upper back and your lats, depending on how you row, if you you know, pull your elbows into your uh, hips, it's going to be more lats. If you pull your elbows into your armpits, it's going to be more upper back. But again, the stability demand takes away from the effectiveness, effectiveness of the exercise, okay? Um, this is not to say they're bad, obviously, but just if you want to build as much muscle as possible, you want to be stable in your back movements, right? So as so therefore, you want to find chest-supported rows um, for a better back muscle activation and stability. It's going to allow you to pour more energy and focus onto your Margaret's which are muscles which you're targeting and less onto trying to balance and you know stabilize your lower back and you know all that stuff right okay b now you might be like frankie you just said cable row is and and dumbbell rows are you know c why are you putting single arms cable row and single arm dumbbell row as b the reason is one because a lot of us i would say you know the majority of people let me make myself bigger the majority of people have a lat muscle imbalance, okay? You, you, there's no way you don't. Um, so these are so effective, in, and the same goes for the single arm lat pull down, are so effective in fixing muscle imbalances, look, making you look more proportionate, uh, more balanced, more symmetrical, but also you can get a full stretch and a full squeeze, right? Because you, you're not constrained of both hands, but you can use one hand to leverage or lengthening your stretch and come back and squeeze. Whereas if you're doing two, you stop here and you stop here. That, does that make sense? So it's like a better range of motion, in my opinion. You know, really, really uh, better tension as well. I don't know if any of you have done single arm cable rows, but you just feel your metabolizing your lats just being ripped apart fully um, on the eccentric. And you can really squeeze your lower lats um, and come back and just hold that squeeze. Um, but mainly because it fixes muscle balance, better range of motion. Um, and obviously, it's a great stretch. You can really fully stretch since you're just using one arm. You can like twist your body to accentuate the stretch. Um, this makes it, you know, B. Now, I would say, you know, this could be A as well. It just depends. But I, I also recent, recently started doing single arm dumbbell rows. They're really good as well. Both of these are great for targeting your lower lats. They provide a better, uh, larger range of motion um, than just doing them with both hands unilaterally. And they fix muscle imbalances. So that that's, that's going to prop them up to a B in my opinion. All right. A tier. So let me explain to you why I put chest supported T-bar row and chest supported dumbbell row. The reason is the only difference between a, a barbell row or a dumbbell row 
is that one, you have to stabilize your core and your lower back, and that takes more energy. And the other, you don't have to worry about that. You have a chest support and you can just focus on pulling your back and you know squeezing your upper back, stretching out. You don't have to worry about balancing and stabilizing. For that reason, you can allocate more energy and focus and better activate the muscle group that you're targeting. And stimulus to fatigue ratio is better. You can recover better because you're not, it's not a huge compound movement where you're like using your whole body to, you know, balance or sorry, stabilize while you're rowing. Uh, it's just your lats um, and your, or your upper back, depending on how you're pulling um, insane stretch. So like when you're, you've inclined the bench and you lie on top of it, you can like bend down like that and just really feel a stretch in your upper back. It's really, really good. Um, especially with the dumbbell row. I'd have to say my personal favorite is chest board dumbbell row, then um, chest board T-bar row. Um, because obviously I just feel like you can get a, if you like, like bend over the edge of the bench and you can like, just really get a massive stretch in your upper back. Um, but the reason it's not S tier, you know, is because sometimes it can be very uncomfortable. You can get a lot of spinal stretching, um, when you're trying to accentuate the stretch over the top, um, which is unnecessary and, you know, takes away from, um, you know, you're not targeting your lower back, right? You're targeting your upper back. And, you know, sometimes people's chest hurts when you're pressing against the bench. But, you know, I just say man up in that case, but I, I understand it is a bit annoying and it does take away from your focus and your energy. Um, but other than that, it's an A tier movement. It's great for your upper back. The squeeze is great. The hit your rhomboids, your lower traps, depending on how you pull. If you pull higher up, your, um, or if you pull like 90 degrees, sorry, 90 degrees, it's your lower traps. But all in all, great, really great movements for your your upper back more than your lats. Um, and your pull-ups is are just are great, right? They are very, very good overall um, movements for your for your lats. Um, but the reason they're not S tier is because soon you're gonna get strong. You're gonna be able to do like 20 reps easily. I'd say obviously, you know, make sure to control the eccentric, um, get a stretch and get a good squeeze. But soon you're gonna get too strong, and then it's, it's going to be all courts progressively overload. You can like hang those weights on your, on your hips or whatever those power lifters or it's not power lifters, like calisthenics people do, but that's just really cringe in my opinion. Just do a lap pull down and progressively overload like that. But you know, you can't go wrong with pull-ups until you get too strong. That's why they're a and not, are not um, S and sometimes people struggle with the mind muscle connection and they prefer lap pull downs. Um, but those are, this is just my opinion. Finally, my S tier fam. First up, wide grip lat pull down. These are the best exercise for your lats, in my opinion. One of the best, at least. The reason being, you can hit upper your upper lats so well and your lower lats, um, but mainly your upper lats, and you could really hit that outer upper lat. Um, I forget the, the name of it, but um, essentially, it like it makes you it makes you way wider rather than if you were to grip like you know, supinated or like a slightly narrower grip, wide grip lap pull downs have made me way wider. And yeah, I just couldn't recommend them enough. The mind muscle connection is great. You just feel your lats, nothing else. Um, and yeah, make sure to like six to 10 rep range, fail within that rep range, slow eccentric, feel your, feel the tension in your lats and pull down and squeeze. Um, but next time you do a lap pull down, my personal opinion is wide grip, is, is superior to all other grips or attachments. Number two is lat pullover. Now this can be a cable rope lat pullover or a, you know, those machines where you go like this. Um, I don't personally have the machine. I've heard they're, they're good and I've tried them. They are pretty good, but the cable rope lat pullover is insane, right? And once you get good at them, so they are hard to get good at. They are hard to develop a mind muscle connection with, but once you do, they are very effective in targeting your upper lats. Um, like very effective. The squeeze is insane. The pump you get is, is great. The tension is great. Um, and it's very, you know, it's probably the most isolationist, uh, movement for your back or your lats, sorry. Um, which is, you know, a very, very good thing. So your wide rear lat pull down is going to hit your lower lats, um, very, very well and your upper lats, but your lat pulled over especially is going to hit your upper lats, which makes that cobra shape, that flaring, those flaring lats. If you want a wider lats, those two are non-negotiable. Um, now next is going to be a chest supported seated row. So you're sitting down like this and the, the support is on your chest. So these are better than lying chest supported, like, like uh, chest supported T-bar rows or chest supported dumbbell rows because for one reason, literally nothing else is working other than your upper back. When you do these, when you're doing your 
um, uh, chest supported T-bar or dumbbell row. As I said, it, in, when you stretch out, it, it stretches out your it stretches out your spine, which is not what you're trying to target, right? You're just trying to stretch out your upper back. Whereas if you're doing a chest supported seated row, it's literally just your upper back that's being stretched um, and taken through a full range of motion. And there's two ways you can do this, right? You can pull 90 degrees like this, okay? Or you raise your seat up. So like, obviously there's a seat and you can adjust the seat height. And then so that you're pulling 45 degrees, both are going to be into your armpits rather than, you know, putting into your, into your hips they are going to be like here. One's going to be like here. And one's going to be like here. Um, both are going to target your lower traps, your rhomboids, um, your upper traps extremely well. So your overall upper back development with these two are insane. Um, this, this essentially would look like a full back workout for me. If I had all the equipment here, this would target, this is all you need for an insane upper back and, um, wide lats. So both chest board seat a row pronated grips at pulling at 90 degrees. And then you lift the seat up, pull at 45 degrees are insane for your upper back. And then chest board seat a row pronated, uh, sorry, um, neutral grip. Where is it? Oh shit. I forgot to put it. Oh yeah. Here it is. Neutral grip is essentially that attachment, right? Where you're just, where you're, um, using your lats. So your lats, um, you can, there's multiple ways to train your lats, right? Um, you can train them, you know, with, with your pull downs, your pullovers, or you can train them with your rows as well. Um, they're different lines of pulls. Um, they're both going to maximize muscle growth, obviously, because they're different ways of training your lats. And again, chest supported, you don't have to worry about stabilizing or engaging your core or your lower backs tensing up. You can just focus on, you know, rowing, pulling your elbows into your hips and squeezing those lats and releasing slowly and squeezing those lats. And, you know, you're not moving forwards and backwards up and down. Um, so these are my S tier for the reasons I've explained next time. If you're developing, if you're uh, trying to, you know, do your own back, create your own back uh, workout. Choose these five exercises. Do two sets still fader on each for six to ten reps with partials at the end. And you'll literally, you can you do that this for the rest of your life and you'll build the best back you possibly can. So with that said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know in the comments if you disagree, agree with any of the exercises I've chosen. Let me know if I've missed some something or enlighten me on one of the exercises which out there that I'm not aware of. Um, but these are my personal favorite and my personal opinion on what I think is best and worst and why. Um, check out the link in the description for free training programs, meal plans, community, um, one-on-one coaching, all the stuff, merch, uh, all that stuff. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.